the best day of our lives. And now is the moment to prepare our future. I have the best profession in the world, a gift that makes me wake up every day with a smile in my face. I'm a professor, a tireless job. I met amazing persons in this world, persons me that showed me the way where it was no way, that gave me hope where there was no hope. My mentors that show me the light where I was living in the dark. My friends that never abandoned me in, my, in the important moments of my life. And my students that inspire me every single day to be a better professional. I remember my first negative assessment that I have in the school. And I was very angry and disappointed in myself. Since then, come a professor near me and told me, Paulo, you lose the battle, but you didn't lose the war. Stand and fight. At the time, I was very angry with that words. I didn't understand the extensions of them. But later in life, I realized that we can only be great persons and winners and successful persons if we stand always and fight. I strongly believe that we should sing by ourselves. And in fact, if you live in the shadow or under the shadow of something or someone, you are committing a suicide. In fact, we should not take care very much about the noise that are surrounding us. We have to listen to the voice that are inside ourselves, the voice that can make us greater, the voice can make us become better persons in this world. I always listen very much to this voice, and I was always responsible for my acts, and especially for the consequences of it. I remember when I started my PhD, two years after, I decided to change of supervisor. At the time, it was very risky because I didn't have no money, my PhD was not funded, and I have to start everything again. My colleagues and friends come to me and told me, Paulo, don't do this. Paulo, you will ruin your career. Paulo, you have to start everything again. I thought with all these noises, and I decided to change supervisor. This was the wisest thing that I have done in my life, because after this, I met amazing persons, persons that changed my life, that opened a lot of doors for me. And in some extension, after some years, some students have also changed supervisor in this department. And I felt that I encouraged them. I felt also one of the most important lessons that I got, it was do the right thing that perhaps someone will follow you. I believe that education is an opportunity. Education allows us to understand everything and everyone. Education gives us the tools to change the status quo, to think out of the box, and create a clear vision to our life. Education should also understand the error as a normal process in life. As education should also encourage students to make their own path or to follow the most difficult path, the one that will make them hurt harder, the one that can make it become better persons in this world. I was challenged in this question sometimes in my life. When I finished my bachelor's degree, I had two options. Or I stayed in Portugal in a comfortable position, or I go to chase my dream. I wanted to be an academic. And for this, I went to University of Barcelona. I worked at countless times and hours in the laboratory, in the field, at home, in the office, most of them with an empty stomach. The fact that I eat, I work with an empty stomach, teach me that I should always do the right thing. Teach me that I always should follow my values and teach me also, also that I should follow my principles. So nowadays, I believe that if I follow my principles, if I follow my values, if I work hard and have a clear vision, I'll make my dreams come true. 
Nowadays, teachers are very worried to deliver the information without thinking if the students understand it. I believe that before give the information to the students, we, give, we have to, to allow students and to make clear minds. And I believe also that nowadays the education system is not the correct because we are creating very few brilliant minds and a lot of bags full of information that will be forgotten with the time. The vision or the lack of vision that the students have or do not have can constitute the problem or the solution for the next years or for our common future. I believe that we should plant the seed of belief in students' minds, but believe in themselves, that together with critical and independent thinking and the action, this is the fuel to change the society that we have today. So, now is the moment to believe, no matter the situation that's surrounding us. Now is the moment to think independently and critically, no matter the voices that's screaming in our head. And now is the moment to take action independently of the walls that we have in our front and persevere as hell to surpass all these walls. I believe that this, the three, these three principles are fundamental for having an effective education. I remember when I come here to Lithuania, I didn't have nothing more than my will to work and my will to believe in myself. I was searching for a job and I went to countless meetings and interviews and in most of them, the last sentence was, if you don't know Lithuanian language, you'll never get a job in academy. I thought I was persona non grata. I thought that Lithuania is not the place for me to follow my career. But I designed my mind to persist as hell. I designed my mind to knock in countless doors. And in fact, I passed so much persons that I'm here today. This was only possible because I believed in myself. This was only possible because I didn't listen to persons that didn't want me. This was only possible because I work it every day. But most important of all, this is only possible because I act in the moment. I'm here to share today the idea that education is only effective if we stimulate students to think independently. And I'll share with you five principles that I, that I use apply in my classes. The first one is share passion about knowledge and science. And if possible, send your message with a smile. The way that we send the message to the students can encourage them, can inspire them, but can also destroy them. I think that we should inspire the students because the process of inspire will destroy the mental barriers that they have in, our, in their mind. And for the education to be effective, this is fundamental to happen. My second principle is create an environment that promotes ideas. And it's very, very important to listen to students deeply. It's very important to create a space where there is no wrong idea, when students can come from different cultures, backgrounds, countries, they can come together and share their own ideas and create a common idea to build a better future, to build bridges among them, but mo most important of all, to, being to, to build tolerance. I strongly believe that the teachers have a very big responsibility here. And also important that we should represent an opportunity for this to happen. My third principle is encourage students to take me measurable risks. All of us that are here today, we are what we are depending on the risk that we took or not. In fact, risk is life-changing for all of us. And 
independently of the result of any action that you had in our life, we have three priceless outcomes. Learning, growth, and resilience. If you understand clearly these three outcomes, we know that risk multiplied by mistakes are equal to success and growth. So, there is no one that can say that never have done a mistake. In academy, we do a lot of mistakes. I do a lot of mistakes, and this is a, a process of growth. And it should be accepted by teachers. <laughs> I remember when I started to give my first class in Lithuanian language. <laughs> I was shaking so much and trembling so much, uh, more than today. And I realized that I, I was provoking a earthquake in Lithuania. <laughs> After I opened my mouth, I felt a hurricane pass over me. And I was so nervous that the student came to me and asked me, Paul, are you okay? Are you alive? Are you in this world? And I told well, everything is in control. I, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm here, no problem. But in fact, in my inside, I felt that I was in the top of the cliff and the best option was jump from it. <laughs> Moral of the story. I took the risk, I made mistakes, priceless mistakes. I grew, I learned in another language. I'm still improving, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> and I became a better professional. I want my students to be great persons. I want my students to be persons that this world will be proud. And I encourage them also, or always, to take risks. And if possible, don't avoid mistakes. My, fifth, my fourth principle is encourage students to challenge every day their fears. And if you do this every day, perhaps one day you will not have any. And in fact, fears and limits are too heavy bags to carry our of our life. We have get rid of them. And in the university or in the world, fears should be outside of the classroom. Fears should be outside of the academy. And in a, bad, in a perfect situation, fears should be outside of this world. Personally, I try every day to overcome my limits. Sometimes I can, sometimes I cannot, but the important thing is that I keep going. I'm struggling on this. I remember when I had 14 years old, I had a car accident that almost took my life. The doctor told to my parents that your son will never be a good student. And in the following two years after the accident, my parents and me were searching for doctors that could cure the constant noise that I have in my head. They were not successful. I still have it, even now. So, from that moment, I saw myself struggling for my objectives, and I had to work much more harder than my colleagues to obtain the same outcomes. But the important thing at the moment, and it was a priceless lesson that I, I learned it since I was very young, it was that doesn't mind what I was in the moment, mattered what I wanted to be. And nowadays, I lost all my fears because I think that is no worst feeling in life that fears someone or something. And in relation to the limits, I'm still working on this. And I believe that one day, I'll not find any. My first, fifth principle is be humble and have an open heart and mind. In fact, how much we humble represents how much great we are. And we can be great scientists, great professors, great students, great visionaries, but humility is the force that drives us for the knowledge. And if we are humble, open-hearted, and we have an open mind, we receive the critics easily. You learn with it. We understand it as a process 
our normal process in life. In the end of every semester, I ask to my students the feedback about my classes. I don't know if they realize how much important this race is for me, because my students are my best professors, are the ones that can teach me and say me about the feedback, how I can become better. I always tell me for, for them to be sincere. I hope they are. <laughs> and for this, we have to be humble and open-minded and open-hearted to receive the criticisms. I remember when I was finishing my PhD, I had a colleague that was constantly laugh about my dreams. I dreamed to be and a good academic, I dreamed to be editor, reviewer, and author of top-level journals in my field of studies. I learned a big lesson with my colleague. Never ever laugh about the dreams of anyone, because if people want, people do. So, late in my life, I became editor, reviewer and author of the journal that I dreamed to. So, I believe that the five principles that I sh share with you today are important for the students who have a top-level education. I believe also that the five prin principles that I share today are fundamental for the students become greater persons. And now, I want you to think with me what these students can do with the information that we share in the class. Most of them will change our world, their world. Most of change will change our world. Thank you very much.